Good Thursday, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversation Daily News. I'm your host, Service Web. Glad you all could join us once again. Well, we made it over the hump, and we're in the home stretch toward the weekend. We, of course, have your news headlines coming up on this Thursday. We have the truth of the day with Mary Ellen Teganovich, and in today's entertainment spotlight, you've been part of my conversation with New York Times bestselling author Johnny Christmas discussing his new book, Swim Team. Enjoy our program. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Service Webb with your Thursday headlines in national news. Biden's burdens grow, sagging global economy as to U.S. woes. As President Joe Biden embarks for Asia on today, he's facing a new risk at home for the economy and his Democratic Party. A global slowdown caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the pandemic shutting down Chinese cities and factories. The world economy can't cast U.S. ballots, but it's a hidden force in this year's midterm elections and could influence whether Democrats retain control of the House and Senate. It's an additional challenge that highlights the steep climb for Biden, whose approval ratings have plunged as prices for everyday goods in the U.S. have soared. Several economists said they think the U.S. is insulated from the rising energy costs that threaten Europe and from China's decline in industrial output, but there are clear spillovers as high gasoline prices continue to weigh on voters' minds and bank accounts. Federal officials acknowledge that global events might make it harder for inflation to fall from nearly 40-year highs to levels that would assure the American people. The Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said Wednesday in Germany that she believes a strong job market means the U.S. can avoid the downturn men seen around the world. We have a great deal of economic momentum in the United States, Yellen said on Wednesday, but you know, this is an environment that is filled with risk, both with respect to inflation and also potential slowdowns. Yellen's successor as chair of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, said in a radio interview for Marketplace last week that the central bank's ability to lower inflation while keeping the economy going could depend on what happens globally. What's clear is that foreign affairs and geopolitics have returned as issues that could shape the opinions of U.S. voters. Even as the midterm races intensify, Biden is devoting his time to other world leaders and not just Russian President Putin and his attack on Ukraine. Biden's trip to South Korea and Japan follows recent meetings with the heads of Italy, Greece, and the members of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. He is also meeting with the leaders of Finland and Sweden, who are seeking NATO membership before he departs for Asia. Fed Chair Powell has said there is little the U.S. bank can do to address higher oil, food, and commodity prices that are tied to geopolitics. Federal Reserve policies such as hiking interest rates or reducing the federal balance sheets have little impact on restarting shuttered factories abroad or generating more natural gas and oil production overseas. That complicates the administration's message about the Fed's ability to contain inflation that has become a leading worry for U.S. voters. In more national news, a third of U.S. should be considering masks, officials said on Wednesday. COVID-19 cases are increasing in the United States and could get even worse over the coming months. Federal health officials warned on Wednesday in urging areas hardest hit to consider reissuing calls for indoor masking. Increasing numbers of COVID-19 infections and hospitalizations are putting more of the country under guidelines issued by the U.S. Centers Disease for Control and Prevention that call for masking and other infection precautions. Right now, about a third of the U.S. population lives in areas that are considered at higher risk, mostly in the Northeast and Midwest. Those are areas where people should already be considering wearing masks indoors, but Americans elsewhere should also take notice, officials said. In more national news, ex-Minneapolis police officer pleads guilty in George Floyd killing. A former Minneapolis police officer pleaded guilty Wednesday to a state charge of aiding and abetting second-degree manslaughter in the killing of George Floyd, admitting that he intentionally helped restrain the black man in a way that created an unreasonable risk and caused his death. As part of Thomas Lane's plea agreement, a more serious count of aiding and abetting second-degree unintentional murder will be dismissed. Lane and other former officers have already been convicted on federal counts of willfully violating Floyd's rights. While they have yet to be sentenced on the federal charges, Lane's change of plea means he will avoid what could have been a lengthy state sentence if he was convicted of the murder charge. In entertainment news, Taylor Swift gets honorary degree from New York University. Taylor Swift has Grammys galore, and now she has a new title, Doctor. The superstar received an honorary doctorate of fine arts from New York University on Wednesday, blowing kisses as the crowd roared when she walked toward the stage at a packed Yankee stadium. Sporting her signature red lipstick and newly awarded honorary robe, Swift joked to the thousands of graduates assembled, 
I'm 90% sure the main reason I'm here is because I have a song called 22. And finally in business news, stocks fall sharply as Target's woes renew inflation fears. The Dow Jones Industrial Average sank more than 1,100 points and the S&P 500 had its biggest drop in nearly two years on Wednesday as big earning misses by Target and other major retailers stoked investors' fears that surging inflation could cut deeply into corporate profits. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen again. Ms. Mary Ellen, take it away. Hi, this is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Every person must find their own path. When you deal with people who are totally unaware, remember everyone must find their own way toward awakening. You already may be aware that we are all essentially one, and we all emanate from the same source. This is great because you are on your way to understanding your awakened true self. However, all people just don't get it, and they probably never will. You may find it painful and frustrating to watch these people as they struggle through life, unconsciously aware of their truth. It is easy for you to judge these people and become intolerant of them. It will help you to know that even these unaware individuals are still part of God's total plan. Even when you find yourself awake, there are still places in your own mind and heart that need healing. In the same way, our world has dark places that require love, forgiveness, and healing. Today, understand the true healing of our entire world. Our whole society depends on the awareness of every individual. And always remember to enjoy the day. We are part of my conversation coming up with author Johnny Christmas in today's Entertainment Spotlight. Stay with us. You're listening to Conversation Daddy News. For Conversation Daddy News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Entertainment Spotlight. New York Times bestselling author Johnny Christmas joined me on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about his success and the new book, Swim Team. Here's a bit of our conversation. Johnny, what has this experience been like for you to be able to create these entertaining stories and to see the way that readers are responding to them? Um, I, I can't tell you how exciting it is because uh, with, with making graphic novels and, and most any book, it takes so long from the beginning to public day, publication day, which is today, um, that, uh, that it takes so long that it, it's really magical when it finally comes out in the world and you can see people reading it, and people responding to it in real time and, and sharing their experiences with you. Um, it, it's like, uh, there, are, there are no words. Um, it's, it's fantastic. There are so many great, I mean, the, the book is fun for sure, Johnny, but there are so many great messages that comes out in Swim Team. I think one of the big ones is being able to learn from those that may be older than you and sometimes younger than you, um, but also the whole idea of teamwork. So how much of that was a big part of your writing this book in the beginning? Oh, it was absolutely a uh, um fundamental. I, I wanted to have a, a, an aspect because a, a big factor of the book is um, that um, parents who don't know how to swim are generally less likely to have children who know how to swim. So I wanted to have that generational aspect all throughout the book, not only in terms of um, um, older people who do know how, who could, who could teach our young Brie um, the ways of, of swimming and, and how to get comfortable with the water, but also, um, you know, um, younger people in her life and older people so you get this whole um sweep of of community uh because all communities have old people young people and i wanted it to feel like a real community book where she was centered inside of a, a community and the, this learning of of coming to joining the swim team and learning to swim was all within a context of a community and and uh friends family and so on and so forth cyrus webb conversations daily news we thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversation Daily News. We'll be back to you guys on tomorrow to wrap up this week. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversation Daily News today. Let's make it a great one.